With the Yoho Ho, it's Tale of the Toaster. Welcome to a new Inazuma 11 ranking type video. This is one I've been excited to do for a little while because I really needed to have a good think about this and properly formulate my opinions. But I have recently been on a very big binge of all the opening songs that the Inazuma 11 series has ever had. Of which, there's over 30, would you believe? Because you've got different versions of each game, you've got multiple songs per anime season, you've got all the spin-off games as well, like the 123 compilation, it all really adds up. So there are a lot of Inazuma 11 opening songs, but what I really want to do today is tell you my favourites by putting them from a lowest to highest ranking. Now, of course, that does mean a few songs are going to have to go at the bottom, but uh, please don't make it sound like I'm calling them bad, because I think the reason I want to do this ranking video is because T-Pistons and everyone else associated has such a high hit rate with the Inazuma 11 openings. I think there's very, very few that don't at least hit, you know, like 7 out of 10 level. I think the T-Pistons standard across the whole is very, very high, so even the ones in the bottom 5 are still good. That's why, as this goes along, I'll be putting the songs into tiers. They're all fully ordered from first to last, but even the bottom tier is still labelled as C tier, just to kind of demonstrate. These are still good. So the two disclaimers to go over before we get started with the ranking. First of all, who made these songs specifically? Because there is a timeline. In some way, they all involve the singer Ton Nino, but across various different bands. So, for the first game and season, it was just T Pistons. Then, for Season 2, right up until the end of Go Galaxy, he added a rapper called KMC, and the band was T-Pistons plus KMC, so their songs make up the majority of the list. Then, for Ares and Orion on the comeback, KMC was gone at that point, and they added a second singer alongside Tonino. That band was called the Pugcats. And then, finally, for Victory Road and beyond, we've basically got all the same people of the Pugcats uh, making the songs, but they have now rebranded to T-Pistons, to bring things full circle. So there's only a couple of exclusions here that haven't technically made the list, and that's the two songs that T-Pistons made for the Inazuma 11 movies, at least the first two. There was Super Tachiya Gurio, and there was also a new version of Tenma de Todoke, but they're both derivative of the original song, and T-Pistons were actually putting more effort into the ending themes of those movies. And this is not a ranking of the ending themes, otherwise the video would be twice as long. So just across the board, I've also I've just excluded all of the songs that come from the movies, especially because by the time you get to the LBX movie, they don't even they don't even make them anymore. Finally, in terms of T Piston's ending themes, they also made an ending to Inazuma Walker, that kind of 2016 time Nintendo Direct equivalent for revealing Inazuma info. They had a song called. Uh, Moete Kitaze, which was very good, but it's an ending theme, so we're excluding it. And I guess there was also Tachiya Garillo Reloaded, but I'm just going to include that in the original. Final thing before we got started, all of my research for this video was basically listening to one long montage of all the Inazuma intros back to back on loop. That montage was made by a Spanish inner tuber called Holders. We actually got in touch while I was making this video, and essentially to save me some time, he has sent me all of his graphics and allowed me to use part of his original montage to make this look more professional and basically save me some time so that I can pull from an existing video instead of making it all from scratch. So be sure to check out his original montage to hear the full songs and thank you to Holders for all the help with graphics and just allowing me to listen to the music. So take it away, number 33. Yeah, something had to get last, so hopefully it's a, a fairly uncontroversial opinion that I've just gone for something that you probably didn't even know existed in the first place. Yeah, Inazuma 11 Online, that was a game that existed once and it's got its own intro song, but I don't really remember it. So 
32. I couldn't put off having an actual anime song for very long, unfortunately, so out of all the songs that were actually in the show, Gachi de Katoze uh, does finish the lowest. The main thing with it is that it's in Inazuma 11 Go Galaxy, but it's before they've revealed that the characters can go to space. So essentially, I think the singers were tasked with make a song that could fit any Inazuma 11 season. It's generic, it doesn't give anything away about the future of the plot. And that is kind of to its detriment, because you could put this in any season and it would kind of just fit for all of them. Genki ni Nario is another one that uh, you may not have heard before, but it says a lot when it was in Inazuma 11 3 Bomber, specifically in Japan. They didn't include it in the dub version of Bomb Blast, it didn't get into the anime. They made this song, but then they just tried to hide it as best as possible. Also got Bokura No Goal next because after three different opening songs for the Inazuma 11 three games and then three anime songs as well, this is the sixth season three song and I think they were just running out of steam a tiny bit by then. And to close out the seat here, this one's got good energy. It's the only time we really hear Ton Nino go for one of those big X Factor hold it notes in one of the main openings, but I, I just don't want to get up. I'm trying to <laughs> binge watch an anime and you're just telling me, stand up, get up now! I think this might be a controversial opinion from me, perhaps. I know Kando Kyoyu is fairly popular, but whenever I'm watching Chrono Stones, instead of having, you know, opening one for 10 episodes, then opening two for 15 episodes, what they did for Chrono Stones was alternate the opening songs. So even numbered episodes would have one and odd numbered episodes would have the other. And the song that this was alternating with Spoiler alert is going to be very, very high on this list. So I was just never really that pumped to hear the other one, you know? I've also got Shoshin will keep on next as well. And Chrono Stones is a season where I hold the songs to a very high standard because it's got some absolute bangers. So this one was again, uh, finally putting the full nail in the coffin for one of my favorite songs that was alternatingly appearing up to that point. This one's still got, I love the punch visuals that all the characters do in the cutscenes. <laughs> Twenty-six brings us to Kiai de Hurricane, and this is a moment to explain a bit more about the list in general because I've been talking all about the T-Pistons song so far because everything we've covered up to this point has only ever existed in Japanese, but this one is the first to have an actual dub version, namely Hurricane Heart from Inazuma 11 3 Team Ogre Attacks. So with this ranking, what am I doing here? Am I just ranking the Japanese versions, or is the dub actually weighing in? Basically. What I've chosen to do is aggregate the songs a little bit because whenever I played in Azuma 11, I would always experience the dub game first, or even when it gets to Ares and Orion, I watched the anime as the dub before I ever watched it in Japanese. So, first impressions stick, 
so I can't really remove the dub versions of songs from it, but sometimes that will help a song, sometimes it won't. In this case, I think Hurricane Heart is an interesting one where it's actually better in the dub, because the Japanese one, it's all going, ha 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 ha, ha 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 ha! Hurricane! And I'm just thinking, what what's the uh, what's the meaning of this? But the whole heat in your heart, heat in your heart, it builds up to something a bit more grand in the dub. So I think that overall helps it. But it's quite weird to have a case where the Japanese one feels more unusual. Let's have another Japanese game opening. Yokatana is one where, again, you may not have heard it unless you've played in Azuma 11 1, 2, 3, or just looked up all of the intro songs on your own accord, but this one has climbed a lot higher over the course of making this. Whenever I first heard it, I kept thinking, these lines are cutting off quite abruptly, I can't really vibe with this, but just the more I listen to it, the more I know that Yokatana is just the end of your sentence. I start going along with it, it's just very celebratory and that's what a re-release of the first three games should be. And to close out the B tier, we've got Teppen i Dash, and yeah, this is one where I really needed to specify in advance how we're treating the dub versions of songs in this ranking because Tepeni Dash in Japanese is very good and the dub version is very bad. It's really the possibly the worst um, song that Inazuma 11 was able to produce until at the very least they made uh, the Aries English version of Stand Up Stand Up If You Love Football but they had no sense of flow with this dub version whatsoever, and that's the one that introduced me to the song. I can respect that the Japanese one is pretty good, but I can only have it so high on the list when I am factoring in both versions, but do let me know where you'd have this song on your list if you were just purely going off the version that you prefer. And the one kicking us off is Ega O Gagol from a game that hasn't even released yet, but thankfully we do know what the Victory Road opening song sounds like. We've only got the short version on Spotify, but we have heard the full version performed live over the uh, game's reveal, and again, I'm mainly judging these songs off of the short versions anyway, but the, the longer versions might factor in when it's one of my absolute favourites where I'm more familiar with the song as a whole, but Ega Oga Goal, the entire lyrics of the song are about the game's development, it means a smile is our goal, and they know they've fought through some hardships to get here in the first place, but they have made a game, they have made a song, and it's uh, my mate Darts Enthusiast describes it as a, a real allegory to the game's development, and I couldn't have put it better myself, because yeah, it's just very sweet. Have to bring things back to season three eventually though. This one's quite nice. It's kind of less memorable than some of the others along the way, but a uh, really strong finish. So now we get a Pugcat song which doesn't get to be dragged down by its dub version. This is kind of the truest blend we ever get of just singer and singer with pretty much no rapping in sight and um, I'm a fan, but I'm also going to follow it up immediately with... Don't 
Chiku Woe Kick as well. I genuinely looked at this every time I was doing my notes and I just kept thinking to myself, are the Orion songs really just back to back as good as each other? And I just think they are the Hitoto Hitoto. I don't know if this is necessarily what we're, what they're going for, but I feel like it fit the setting very well. It made me, if even if it's not some kind of Russian traditional method of singing, I could believe that it is just by the way that they uh, included it. But uh, Orion, it still would have been nice to hear some dub versions done properly. But at the end of the day, they they carried pretty hard with what they got. And now we've got possibly the hardest thing to judge in the entire list. Leave your Inazuma mark on the world is an intro song developed for a demo of a game that also hasn't released yet, and it's only been added to Spotify as of December 24th. I scripted this video, um, well loosely, what I'm saying is unscripted, but the order is uh, obviously planned, and this song didn't even exist at the time I made the first draft of the order. They, the, It's a good job I didn't like record it earlier, otherwise this song would have just popped into existence and I'd need to recreate my whole setup again, but I actually like this more than Ego O Gagol. It's, it's, you know, slowing things down a bit again, but I am going to have to listen to this one a lot more on Spotify now that it finally exists because, yeah, I'll be able to get a better mark on where to put this one. But for now, it's already 19th, and I'm just glad that they gave us an extra song because they really didn't have to. And to close out the A minus tier, uh, this one might hurt a few people. But please let me reiterate that 18th is really high and I still love the song a lot. It's in a tier called A- for a reason. In particular, doing the cover of this with Delise on my channel a while ago really helped me enjoy it even more. I feel much more connected to the song than I ever was before. But again, this is one where I heard the dub version before I ever heard it in Japanese and they just went really low key with the dubs, dubbing vocal style of Inazuma 11 three songs, they never really get out a second gear with it, so even though Good Kita, as it turns out, is a bit of a banger, um, first reactions wise, I always felt the game openings were on a slight decline as it went along, including uh, the hurricane immediately after this. But we'll see how they immediately broke that trend as we go into the A plus tier with... Bright Shining Day is one that I think gets a lot of flack online for some reason, and I don't think it's really that deserved. It obviously gets a lot of comparisons to the song from Go Shadow, which is its direct competitor, if you will, but they're just not trying to do the same thing whatsoever, and I think this is really charming, and particularly, it kind of kickstarted the trend of the dub songs starting to get really, really good again. This is one where I would listen to the dub version over the original in a heartbeat and it just makes me feel nice. But all right, get ready because we've got to include it somewhere. At number 16, it's... This is the classic, and it's such a fun one to just sing with anybody, because even the most casual of Inazuma 11 fans can probably recall enough of this song, whether they do it in Japanese or in English. Either way, you can always just have a little Tachiya Gurio with people, and 
This is a song that needed to bang. Like, it was gonna be the dub song for all of seasons one through three in the English dub of the show, but it was also gonna be part of the first game, the one that tests the waters in all the markets and kickstarted the whole anime in Japan, and it bloody worked. Everyone knows this song and love it or hate it, it's cheesy, but it's it, it's rent free up here. Chiku Omawase has grown on me loads, and I've actually found this to be one of the hardest ones to rank again because I'm struggling to fight the recency bias. If you look at the Inazuma songs I've been listening to most recently, this would be top of the list. I've been binging Chiku Omawase right now, and I really want to do a cover of it as well. I might already have one, I'll let you know on screen if it exists. But I, I've got to try and hold it, hold myself back a little bit because it's a recent binge because I didn't appreciate it that much at the time. I never understood what the lyrics meant, so I originally kind of thought of it along the lines of Gachi de Katoze, where they weren't necessarily talking about space. It didn't feel space vibey to me based on the instruments, basically, but the lyrics are definitely all about flying through space, and then when they follow it up with Supernova, yeah, that's what I think of when I think galaxy space-themed song. But Chikyu and Mao say, you just take it out of context, you don't even need to know what they're saying. It's just really nice, and I think whenever I didn't appreciate it at first, it's because I was either waiting for Supernova, or it's because I was reflecting on the fact Gacha de Katoze is at second bottom of this ranking for a reason. But I wasn't really looking at the song in between, especially when it wasn't in a game, and actually, it bangs. Finally, at number 14 in the list, we get a song from Inazuma Eleven Strikers. And these have been some of the most interesting to rate over the course of making the video again, because I've never played the Strikers games. I was not very familiar with its intro songs, but they all go extremely hard. The one from 2013, the third Strikers game, is the lowest of the three technically, but it's still awesome. My my favourite anime that's not connected to football whatsoever, so not in a Zoom 11 and not Blue Lock, is one called School Rumble, and I would say that might be my favourite anime opening of all time, the one in season one, and this song reminds me of that, so if you're one of the two School Rumble fans in chat, <laughs> this one's for you. <laughs> Now everyone's kind of familiar with this song, but if it felt a little different to you in that preview I just played, that's for a reason. This is not Maji de Kansha, but Suge Maji de Kansha, specifically from the Japanese version of Inazuma 11 2 Fire. So this is lyrically a different song to Maji de Kansha, and I've only got it a little bit lower because the game being limited to 90 seconds at most means you don't get much of the iconic sha la 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 in there. But you do get it in... The real Maji de Kansha, the one that was actually the opening for season two of the anime. So it's it kind of weird that the game song is the quote-unquote powered-up version, at least by the name, because 
certainly season one was a game, then it was an anime, but by season two is it already an anime that got a game at that point? But either way, yeah, these songs are technically different songs because they have different titles and different lyrics, but they are the same vibe. This is the debut of KMC, a rapper who I really do miss, I'm not gonna lie, I still love the new songs that T-Pistons are producing, but KMC really made it, and yeah, this is where you can just watch the full version and sha la 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 sha la 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 sha la 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 sha la la S minus tier next! Yeah, if you thought Tachiya Gurio was the first ever song made for Inazuma Eleven, that's not true, because only in Japan did just Inazuma Eleven won the game get its own song called Ryo Seishun no Inazuma Eleven. So Tachiya Gurio was already building upon the original Ryo, and most of the song titles that followed it also have Ryo somewhere in the title, but low key? I think they got one of the best ones right out of the gate. This is a song that they actively, like, rejected to use. They could have put it in the European release of Inazuma Eleven One, for instance, but they went with Tachiya Gurio because it's, yeah, a little more memorable and iconic, and I think that was the right decision, but this is a super under-the-radar little treat that's been hiding in plain sight the entire time. This is T-Pistons' first song, at least in an Inazuma Eleven capacity, and... I think not only is it great, I think it's very funny that totally unplanned it is 11th on the list. We're in the top 10 now though, and we get another game exclusive song with Wildfire Firebird. This gets overshadowed a lot by Thunder Flash's opening, which of course is still to come. But this is really good in its own right. It's another one where I think getting to do a cover of it yourself, if you enjoy singing along to this stuff, is really fun. Because the final chorus... Well, I've got a cover of it on my channel for a reason. I love this song. <laughs> And guess what? We've got another game exclusive song here that gets overshadowed by the other version, but Big Bang is also super nice. It definitely isn't as in your face as something like Supernova, but this is one where Wildfire Firebird got pushed up by having a really nice dub version. Big Bang has the opposite, where Galaxy is the game we never got in Europe, but when I was working on the fan translation patch for the game, we got to make our own dub version instead. And it essentially brought to life this song that I'd never paid that much attention to before and made me realise how good it actually was all along. And I feel like if the game just released back in 2016 as intended with an English version, we'd have probably been talking about this as one of the greats. Well, here's one that everyone talks about as one of the greats. <laughs> Eighth place is no mean feat for Tsunaga Ryo, and I can imagine for some people this might be number one, but this is a fascinating one to talk about because the Japanese version and the dub version both help this so much to the point where they feel like completely different songs, both of which are worthy of the top ten. The When I think of the Japanese one, I see KMC in his iconic like yellow hair dye in the music video dancing in front of the school, and the best part of the actual intro itself where it's just 
all the characters from all across the season just going Zetai, 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 peace! Caden Soundtown getting in an intro with whoever the hell else. But then the dub version that actually got to be in the games, it barely even feels like the same song, but it's so awesome. This is another one that I used to sing with all of my friends when I was at first getting into the games, and we, we cannot stop talking about how good it is. But the reason it's only as low as 8th is because our next entry is going to be a bit of a double up. First of all, here in 7th... And therefore, in 6th, closing out the S- tier is... Yes, just like Maji Dikan Shah, Mina Atsumario from Strikers and then from Strikers 2012 is technically two different songs because they have different videos, they have slightly different uh, lyrics and titles, but they could not be anywhere other than directly back to back. I put the Strikers 2012 one slightly lower because it's very minor. I think Strikers 1 has. Uh, more doubling up of the voices during the big chorus moments, whereas for 2012 it's just Ton Nino by himself. But in return, Strikers 2012 goes for the high note at the end, and the high note adds so much. So they are both incredible, and they were so robbed of a dub version. In a Zoom 11, Strikers 1 released in English, and all they did was play the background tune of the video instrumental. It's so sad. This is my sixth favorite Inazuma 11 intro. It might even get higher with how much I've been listening to it at the moment. But they just, they couldn't be bothered to make a dub version and they just put it in instrumental and it meant that all of the English language fans, if they didn't look it up online, they never knew what a banger was hiding in Strikers. And I didn't really know about it until I was making this video, but it says a lot that a song that I was barely even familiar with before starting this script has climbed to 6th and 7th in the list? That's <laughs> just so good though. What a banger! Uchika Dak was in Inazuma 11 Go, the anime, for only two episodes. It was there just for the finale of the season, but it was also in Inazuma 11 Go Shadow, the game, which is kind of why Bright Shining Day got overlooked a little bit, but I feel like everyone knows how good this one is, right? Like, T Pistons had been... He'd just come off of season three where all of the songs were really nice, but very intentionally samey, they're trying to match the vibe of each other. Then for Go, he just says, yeah, but what if I made an absolute bop? And Break It Down is a lot of people's favorites. It doesn't matter whether you're listening to it in Japanese or the dub, they are both 10 out of 10. But how could it be 10 out of 10 and only fifth on the list? Well, that's because we've got another 10 out of 10 in... <laughs> Yeah, isn't that crazy? Uchiku Dak is so unbelievably good and it's not even my favourite intro from Go. But in fact, the very first one they made for the show, Ten Made Todoke, it just fills me with joy. And yeah, this is again why I'd wanted to exclude the movie songs because we have Niji wo Kote Ten Made Todoke as like a extended, grander version of the song, and I don't want two Tenma de Todokes in the top five, but 
This is absolutely so happy to be at number four. It doesn't matter that we never got it dubbed because I just, I listen to this over and over again in Japan and it just makes me feel happy. So, number three is... Thunder Flash Express. I'd only a few months before hearing this for the first time just discovered Break It Down. I played Go Light first, then I got Go Shadow just to entertain me a little bit in the meantime while waiting for Thunder Flash to come out. And I just thought, how have they stepped their game up so much? Just all of a sudden, out of nowhere, the Inazuma intros were already brilliant. And then they make basically break it down and Thunder Flash Express back to back. I am stunned. But again, this I think this is the most impressing dubbing of a song they ever made. Because this song goes so fast with the rap. And they just made it feel completely natural. You know the Ares music dubbing team would have lost that flow entirely. But this is number three for a reason. I... We'll listen to the dub version more, but the Japanese one still hits unbelievably hard. And out of all of my intro covers that I did across my original Let's Plays before I started doing them as duets with the Lees, I knew that Thunder Flash was probably at the time my actual favourite intro, and I still had to do so much practice to learn that song, but it was so rewarding when I could pull it off. You may notice, in fact, by the way, that the entire top five is made up of songs from the Inazuma 11 Go trilogy. That's not going to change because there's only two songs left. And if you've been keeping track, you may already know what they are. But let's just go in first with number two, which is... This in the show before Thunder Flash Express and like what on earth? I was saying how season 3 was already trying to be a similar vibe with all of its songs going along and building upon what season 1 and 2 had already done before that. Chrono Stones, T Pistons and KMC just said nah what if we made like a Latin American and Spanish inspired flamenco-ish song to open up the season about football getting deleted. It's like, Whose idea was this? And whoever it was, please give them a raise, because this is awesome! Jonetsu di Muneatsu. I would watch episodes of Chrono Stones just to hear the intro song, so needless to say, I was a bigger fan of the odd-numbered episodes than the even-numbered ones that had Kando Kyoyu in it, but this is one where I almost don't even want a dub version to exist, because that would be Europeans doing a European-style song at that point, but hearing a J-pop band Doing Latin American style flamenco ish stuff is such a genre bend that I feel like this can completely transcend the space of the Inazuma 11 world. And you could just drop this on random music listeners and they'll be like, whoa, that's pretty cool actually. But you know what else is cool? The number one. I think you knew what this was going to be. Here it is. <laughs> Of course it's Supernova. Everyone loves Supernova. I challenge you to find me someone who doesn't like Supernova. And you know what? Actually, I don't because I don't want to hear that opinion ever, to be honest. Supernova is probably the most common choice for a favourite intro song. And there's a reason for that. They're right. Supernova goes absolutely insane. And I don't even get why! It's like, oh, we've got a season in space, so we need to make it about space. How do we get the vibe across? Oh, we just yell Supernova about 20 times in a row. 
but it's just so energetic. You you find yourself singing along no matter what, or at least jiving along in your chair. And this this is one where having a full version as well helps so much because it doesn't lose momentum whatsoever. Some of the full versions of the intro songs, you you kind of end up surprised by where they go. Like Mina Atsumarillo goes on a whole uh, chant where you have to spell TPK a whole load of times over for T Pistons KMC, I guess. But Supernova is just four minutes of unabashed bliss. And that is my list. Again, I must reiterate, T Pistons and all of his variants, like the podcasts, Ton Nino's work has brought us over 30 complete bangers in this world, and I'm so grateful that Inazuma 11 just stayed consistent and used the same singer for every single season, even after they'd had years away from being on screens and on game consoles. They didn't have to stick with him the whole time, but they did, and it creates such a wonderful package with nary a miss in sight. T Pistons has also got some other songs that aren't from Inazuma 11. I was, for example, highlighted to his World Cup song, uh, literally just called Vamos Nippon. But there's so much more out there, and yeah, the guy just has such a high success rate. And maybe go and listen to some of them, because all of his work is on Spotify. After all, the the launch of T Pistons stuff to Spotify is kind of what inspired me to make this video in the first place. But I love his work, and I love in Azuma 11 and I can't wait to play Victory Road where his newest work will actually end up in a game once again. So please let me know in the comments what your favourite songs are from in Azuma 11 intros. Maybe even let us know what your favourite endings are if you want and I'll see you in another video.